This video series is brought to you by the ASU Writing Center within the Academic Support Network. Thank you for joining me as we discuss part three of tips for revising and editing final papers. This video, our third in the series, will discuss voice in writing. Let's get started. Another aspect of your writing that you may want to revise or edit for your final paper is voice. Voice in writing refers to how the writing sounds in the reader's head or when read out loud. It is part of the feeling the reader has while reading your work. Well-known authors tend to have a definitive voice. This means you could read something and know who wrote it just by the way the writing sounds. Voice is impacted by word choice, tone, sentence style, and organizational patterns. Reflective writing assignments are things like journal entries, blog posts, letters, personal narratives, etc. In reflective writing, the reader usually wants to hear about you, your experiences, and the significance of those experiences. Usually, this type of writing allows you to use first-person pronouns like I, me, etc. Another kind of voice in writing is academic voice. Academic voice is the most common voice expected in college-level writing. Academic writing is usually written in third person, he, she, they, and is less focused on the personal experience of the writer. There is more emphasis on the argument, research, findings, etc. Because academic voice is most common in college writing and also the furthest from how we normally talk with others, let's cover some tips for revising or editing for academic voice. Generally, we will avoid any first-person phrasing, meaning anything that includes I, me, we, us, and you. Most sentences that begin with I have the verb after them, like I think and I feel. This phrase can be cut from most sentences and you will still have a complete sentence. In this first example, we have a standard I feel sentence that might appear in a first draft. Here we can see that I feel can be taken out completely and we still have a complete sentence. We can go a step further and replace it is with more specific language. An easy way to elevate the formality of your voice is to avoid contractions. You can replace any contractions in your writing with the full set of words. Here we have the sentence, while his argument is compelling, it isn't well supported in the community. In this example, we can replace the word isn't with is not, which helps with academic voice. Writing in academic voice typically means avoiding the use of slang words and emotional language. Slang words often contribute to a personal or less professional tone of voice. If a word or phrase is something you'd likely include on a social media post, it may not be something you want to include in an academic paper. Academic voice also doesn't often use emotionally driven language. Emotional language tends to be attached to a first person narrative, so it's clear who is feeling what that would make the voice reflective instead of academic. Finally, academic voice frequently uses active voice over passive voice. Active voice makes the subject very clear because it is towards the start of the sentence. For example, Sam shut the door. Our subject is Sam, our verb is shut, and our object is the door. This is active voice prioritizing the subject's actions over the subject. Passive voice, on the other hand, hides or even removes the subject from a sentence 
and discusses the object first. For example, the door was shut by Sam. Our object is the door, our verb is was shut, and our subject is Sam. But in this order, the first thing read about is the door, which prioritizes the object over the subject. To identify and revise passive voice, look at your sentence and determine the order of the subject, verb, and object. Then rearrange from there. For example, this sentence, the Yellowstone ecosystem, has been influenced by humans since before its creation as a park, and they continue to do so today, is in passive voice. How can we tell? Let's determine the subject, verb, and object. The sentence starts by talking about the Yellowstone ecosystem. However, this is not our subject. Why? Because the Yellowstone ecosystem is being affected by our verb, to influence. It is the receiver of that action, and therefore the object. We established our verb is to influence. So, finally, the subject, the doer of the verb, is humans. We can see that this sentence is ordered object, verb, subject, making it passive. To edit this, we need to order it subject, verb, object. That would read like this. Humans have influenced the Yellowstone ecosystem since before its creation as a park, and they continue to do so today. If you have questions about anything we covered in this video, our online study hub is a great place to post questions and get a tutor response. If you would like to continue learning about voice in writing and improve your academic voice, see this resource about varying sentence structure. Thank you for joining us to discuss voice in writing, and we hope to see you in our next segment, Reviewing Transitions. Thank you.